Good afternoon, nerd friends. Welcome back to the Nerd Bench. Why is there a laptop and a speed control? Well, today we're going to walk through a basic step firmware updating using the LCD program box, a Windows computer, and the Hobbywing USB Link software installed. This particular example is an XR8 Pro G3 that in the middle of a firmware update got disconnected. So right now the speed control doesn't work, it doesn't calibrate, it won't connect to a programming box. And what we're gonna try to do now is use this to revive the speed control. It works most of the time, not every time, so hopefully this one works. If you don't know how to get the program, there's gonna be a link in the description down below to get that. And then if you need a hand installing this, basically it's a, you download a zip file, that's the program, and then you'll unzip that file or decompress it. That'll install it onto your computer. It's kind of just like any other third party program that you're gonna install onto a Windows computer. Um, and then from there, you can open the program uh, just like I have it here. So we start with a USB cable to plug into our uh, program box, that guy goes right there. And these have to be a data cable. And when you plug it in, it'll light up and it says uh, connecting to USB and it'll just say that basically the whole time. Uh, after that, I got the speed control plugged into a battery pack and I turn the speed control on. It'll bring up a little screen automatically. And this is when we're gonna get into our, no our unknown zone because this may not actually let it connect. Right, so we get a read speed control setting error right there. And what we're gonna do, is hopefully, it'll bring us right to the firmware screen, there it goes. I didn't touch anything, it did that by itself. And you see here, it's got an error, it says boot v1 point something. Uh, that is just because it failed during a firmware update, so now the speed control is essentially blank. So you can see here, we only have one option to choose from. There's nothing to pick, and we just go uh, upgrade here at the top, sorry. Click that, and it'll push our way through. I do have, I hope you like my huge mouse. We'll let this play in real time, just so you get an idea of how long this takes on this particular setup. This will vary a little bit, depending on computers and cables and all sorts of stuff like that, um, but it does take a couple minutes. You guys are right, it does feel really weird just standing here watching this bar go across quietly. <laughs> And there we go, it says upgrade, operate, finish successfully. You hit okay. And now you should be able to go into the general, yeah, it'll automatically connect. You don't have to click anything. It just cycles through for a second here. Basically just like how you would connect it to use it. And it'll pop up with the speed control settings here. Just a moment, here it comes. Bam. So now you can see you can get in here and adjust all the speed control settings normally. You got general settings, throttle, brake, timing. Uh, if you've never used this interface, it is kind of nice. If you're into having your laptop out at the track, this is an, an excellent way to go about that um, because you do get the screen and the interface. You're not touching your phone at the track. You know, I'm a big fan of all that. So like I said, there is a link in the description down below on where to download and install the Hobbywing USB Link software. Uh, it shows up as three different locations and I get that question all the time. Which one should I use? It doesn't matter. All three of them are the same. Any three of those links are... are 
the, the exact same download, so don't worry. Um, after you install the program, you have to download this file, decompress it, it'll install, you open it up, and then it's gonna run probably an update, maybe not, it depends. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't, depending on when you're watching this video, but a lot of times there will be an update after you download it. There's two types of updates uh, that'll download, that's why you kinda have to have the internet the first couple times you use it, or the first time you use it at least. Uh, it'll download an update that is the database, which is all the speed control settings for all the various models, and there's actually a software update, which is the actual program itself that'll have an update as well. So those are two to look out for. Um, just don't plug it in and try to use it right away. Give it a second or two so they can run those updates if that makes sense. Now I know I mentioned it before, but I gotta bring it up again. The data cable is an important one. And one of the ways that you can tell is when you plug something USB into a Windows computer, it makes that little chime, that Windows noise. It's the same thing that it makes if you're like plugging an external keyboard or an external hard drive, that little boop boop. That's a terrible imitation of it. That's not even what it sounds like. But you know what I mean if you're a Windows user. If that doesn't happen, it's probably not a data cable. This guy will still say connecting to USB, but if it's not a data cable, none of this stuff will work. So if it don't, like I said, if it doesn't work, just try another cable and try to make sure it's a data. Here, we'll try to make the noise. Hold on. I'll unplug this and then plug it back in. Here. On this laptop, it's a micro or it's a USB C, and that's a USB C. But I still have to run a weird little adapter. If I just use a regular USB C, the USB C cable, that's not doesn't really work every time. So I still have to use adapter. So that's that's another one of my sort of caveats that I run in where they don't, where these don't work. If you do have any connection problems, I have this unplugged from the receiver because I don't have it set up in a vehicle. But if you're doing this in the car and you run into any issues, unplug the speed control from the receiver or you have to turn the radio on. The speed control has to be calibrated to the radio and the radio has to be on so that the speed control sees neutral. If the speed control doesn't see neutral or no signal when it's powered on, it'll block out any sort of programming and that'll make everything not work. Um, I tend to try to do firmware updates with the speed control of the car if I can, but I know that's not always a possibility. So just to be extra safe, always just for firmware updates, you want to have it, it unplugged from as many things as possible. So at least unplug it from the receiver, you know, in case somebody bumps the steering wheel, you get some back or bumps the, the servo and you get some back feed, stuff like that. It, 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 it's not always a good thing. Well, there you have it, folks. If you do have any questions, comments, or concerns, please shoot us an email, Northamerica at hobbywing.com. If you didn't know, we also do a podcast. It's called RC Stuff, powered by Hobbywing. We give away free Hobbywing stuff each and every episode. All you have to do to find out how to enter to win is listen to an episode. Just look up RC Stuff, powered by Hobbywing, on your favorite podcast service. And as always, folks, thanks for watching. New every Tuesday, right here on the Hobbywing official YouTube channel. We will see you all next time. <laughs>